Kids 24-7 It's 24-7 radio. Stephon Devereaux, Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling, Angry Kids 24-7 radio. We are back. We got some heat this week, people. We got some heat this week. Ooh. Oh, man. Big show, big show, big show. I want to thank you for joining me today, uh, wherever you are, whatever platform you're listening to. This from uh, the Angry Kids radio station, Google, Spotify, whatever. I want to thank you for joining us. So let's get into this. All right, so Impact. Impact is in the news. Can you believe it? Impact is in the news. The week and the weekend of one of their biggest pay-per-views of all time. Impact is in the news. Why is Impact in the news? Oh, not because, you know, people were saying, this is going to be the greatest pay-per-view ever. Not because people were going to say, oh, man, the main event. I can't wait to see. No, 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 no. Kind of does have something to do with the main event. But it does. (sighs) They're not talking about that. You know what they're talking about? The participant in the main event for the Impact World Championship. The opponent to the champion, Sammy Callahan, shouts out to my man, Sammy. I know a lot of people don't like Sammy Callahan, but got to meet the guy a couple of times. Thought it was cool. Had him in for a show uh, about 10 years ago and some other times after that. But anyway, shouts out to Sammy Callahan for what you're doing over here at Impact. I see you. I see you. You deserve credit. But let's talk about the person. He's going to face and defend his championship against Miss Tessa Blanchard, daughter of Tully Blanchard, (laughs) granddaughter of Joe Blanchard, a woman who knows this business, been a part of this business since the day she was born, knows how to get heat, which, you know, it's cool. It's a good thing. Got a great look. Incredible in the ring. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the fact that yesterday she goes on Twitter. And you know what she did? She started calling out women wrestlers for not supporting her. Now, she didn't name names. They never name names. Never. Never name any names. But what she did was, oh my goodness, she did say that uh, what women should be supporting each other and so forth and so forth. Now, I think the stuff on her Twitter page, if I'm looking, I'm looking at it now, it's gone. Can't find it. But, oh, okay, there we go, there we go. She wrote on her Twitter page yesterday, hey women, try supporting one another. Cool things happen. Woo! That was heat. Not. That was just her saying, hey, please, guys, support me here. I'm trying to become champion. But the responses were incredible. She was called a bully, a terrible person, and more stuff. I don't want to get into everything she was called because it's really not my business. Even though I got to report this stuff on this show. But the main heat is coming from the fact that pro wrestler Allison K. I'm sorry, I've never heard of her. She's probably a lovely person. But she said, in response to Tessa's tweet, remember when you spat in the face, I mean spat in, the, in a black woman's face and called her the N-word in Japan? Was that you supporting women? The audacity of this tweet. Woo! Oh my goodness. Oh, talk about heat. Talk about heat. And then it started. The avalanche of other people just, I mean, man, it was the domino effect. One by one by one by one. Start coming in and making claims about Miss Blanchard. 
Now, I'm not here to, to say if they're true or not. Do I, I mean, do I believe some of this? Oh, of course I do. <laughs> I just know how people are. Of course I do. But Miss Blanchard, <laughs> this ain't good. This is not good, Miss Blanchard. Now, of course, she's come back and she's denied the allegations. But what makes it more interesting is that that black woman that she said that word to has come out in response of Miss K's tweet. And guess what? Of course she did. Of course she did. She 1000% backed it up. Of course she backed it up. And I'm not going to give her name because from what I understand, she really didn't want this to come out, which and that's kudos to her. People forget that these performers, no, they're not performers. These athletes, they are, it's like a brotherhood, a sisterhood. It's a fraternity, a sorority. They don't like when things leave their house. Yeah, they probably don't like this woman. They probably can't stand her. But they kept their mouths shut because of the respect they have for this business, for this industry, for this sport. They knew she was going to be the next one, and they didn't stop it. Because let me tell you something. You think Tessa Blanchard's the only one that's out there saying these words to... to uh, competitors in the ring and out of the ring you think she's the only one of course not of course not speaking as a black man i've dealt with racism in this business oh man let's be real when i first got on the scene i was 18 years old i was 18 years old I was taught by a guy that people called a crook and he kind of turned out to be one. But anyway, we won't talk about that. I was 18 years old. By the time I was 20, I had a television show. I had a radio show. I had a promoter's license. I was running my own shows. I was doing everything. I had some help. Don't get me wrong. Shouts out to Big Neil, the real deal. You can listen to the Neil Haley show, by the way, here on Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Eastern Standard Time. P.M., of course. But I dealt with racism because a lot of people didn't understand how this little black kid from the hood, yeah, from the hood, was able to come out here and get all these, have all these advantages when he first just got in the, let me tell you how I got those advantages. I picked up phone, my phone. I called people. I went, I seen people. I sat down and spoke to people. Those people gave me opportunities. But this one day, you know, I thought everything was cool until this one day I'm on my radio show. WCXJ 1550 AM in Pittsburgh doing my radio show. And guess what? I'm doing re, uh, reports. And back then I used to do top 10 and top fives and things like that. Top, yeah, I should go back to doing that. But the top five wrestling companies in the world or locally, whatever. Usually it was mainly independent stuff. And I only gave news and rumors of the WWE and WCW, ECW at the time. But a promotion, a wrestler from one of the promotions caught my station, caught live on the air and got upset because I had said something about the company he worked for. And do you know what he had the nerve to call me live on the air? Oh, yeah, he said the N-word. Oh, yeah, he said it. He called me an effing N-word. That broke my heart, man. That broke my heart. Maybe look at the business and look at the area a lot differently. It really did. It wasn't until, and, and, and see, the thing was, I was 
really still living in a fantasy land because I was a part of the wrestling business. I was a part of a sport that I grew up watching, practicing on my lower brothers. Yeah, they took beatings. Feel bad for them. Shout out to my lower brothers. But the racism didn't bother me until that moment. Then we fast forward. Fast forward. A few years later, maybe three, four, say four. I meet a guy by the name of New Jack, Jerome Young. Yeah, I heard the horror stories about this man. I heard these things. But you know what, though? <laughs> Got to meet him through a friend. And this guy said, look. He told me what I was to them in this business and what I will forever be to them in this business. He told me. It was either I was going to have to accept it, smack some heads around as I'm accepting it, just so they know not to test me or just walk away. Well, I continued my journey. I didn't leave for a minute. But I, I came back and continued my journey. But I always thought about what this he taught me. Always. I thought about the business a little bit differently. So I still did television, still did radio, was promoting shows. So when I got to UCW and did a, I got uh, trying to think of the best way of putting this. Yes. And my story is long, but I'm getting somewhere. I promise. But did a, uh, got a phone call. This phone call was from a wrestler. I respect so much. Love the guy. One of the first guys that, I, you know, made me want to get, Involved in independent wrestling when I was 17 years old. Because I really didn't know too much about indie wrestling at 17. This was in 1995. 96 is when I got in. But anyway. He says, hey, uh, you know, Devereaux, I got an idea, you know, got a friend uh, who's trying to run a show out in a certain area. And I would like to have, you know, have you involved, you know, I mean, maybe you guys could sit down and come together and do the show together and and blah, 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 make some money. Okay, cool, you know, cool. I like making money. <laughs> of course, we all do. So I said, okay, check it out. Talk to the dude, talk to him for a while, you know, for a couple of weeks. Never gave an answer on if I was going to be in it or not. But I just wanted to fill the dude out. Well, he, the kid just didn't have it all at, the t at that time. So I said, you know what, here's the deal. I won't do the show, or I won't, you know, pr co-promote the show, but I'll bring Neil in. You know, I was managing Neil at the time. And Neil and I will come and do the show. And we'll wrestle such and such. And we'll see what happens. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe we'll go and do something down the line. So, uh, okay. No problem. He was cool with that. No problem. Get to the show. Everything's cool. Now, the guy can't pay the wrestlers. Because the show didn't do well. Now, we have some big names there. This was 2009, I believe. St uh, Just Incredible, Balls Mahoney, you know, a couple other names were there. I can't remember uh, at this time. But um, the promoter couldn't pay the wrestlers. So what did the promoter do? The promoter bounced. He bounced. Took the gate money and bounced. Because before he did that, he came and asked me if I had any cash. And I'm thinking to myself, why are you asking me for cash? But I told him, no, of course. He couldn't pay the wrestlers. He told me that. So he leaves, takes the gate money. The wrestlers knew who he was. Some wrestlers got paid and some didn't. One of those people were Balls Mahoney, who didn't get paid. Balls Mahoney, RIP, that's my dude. Miss him to death. One of the nicest guys in the world. Nicest guys in the world. But dude didn't have the cash. He didn't have the cash. 
The wrestlers were ticked. They went to this man's house. I said, wow, Neil and I didn't get paid either. But it's a part of the business. You live and you learn. So we was okay. So we take it a step further. Let's go to the next day. Very next day. My name is plastered everywhere. My shoot name is plastered everywhere. Why? Because someone, and you can probably told a reputable promoter who happened to write a newsletter at the time that I was the reason or I ran off with the money and didn't pay the wrestlers. Yes, me, Stefan Devereux. And you know how quick it was for them to believe it? It took less than 10 seconds. You should have seen the comments on the message boards. Yeah, back then we had message boards. The message boards. Facebook was still new, but it was, st- it was you know, on Facebook. Yes. The newsletter. It's probably still out there. You could probably Google it. But yeah. But it was almost destroyed. I took a phone call from Neil to do this. Now, you know what I found out? The reason why he blamed me. And the reason why people believed him so fast was because he was blaming the black dude. It was just easy. It was too easy. He got out of that quickly. Years later, his reputation kind of, because he's still out there. And his reputation is not the best. Nothing against the guy, because I forgot. But, i tell you something about that. And how I have experienced racism. I was called the N-word then about this situation, which was amazing to me. But see, someone told me a few years before that, <laughs> what, you're all, what I will always Mentality has been in this business and in this country for far too long. Day one, actually. Is it a tough subject for me to talk about sometimes? Yes. But let me say this. I'm happy Tessa Blanchard put that tweet out there yesterday. Because now this conversation is being had in the chat rooms and so forth, or group chats and in the groups, Facebook groups and so forth, and on Twitter and, and all that. This conversation is being had. It's time to stomp these dudes out. It's time to stomp these dudes out. The stories of... Guy's not wanting to work another guy because of the color of his skin. It's time to stomp these du- these dudes out. See, we're tolerant. <laughs> we're tolerant towards racism. But, oh, oh, no, no, no. Not- we can't do foreign gimmicks anymore because it might be offensive to this country. We can't do this because it might be offensive to them. Man, did you see what happened with... The one kid, I think his name is Sonny Kiss from TNA, or excuse me, from AEW. Wow, TNA off your head. But you see what happened? This kid has an awesome gimmick. And what are they doing? They're getting on him because of, and what did the community do? They came and fought for him. And they were But when somebody brings up racism and wrestling, There's an issue. There's an issue. Vince McMahon himself was a part of that issue. His dad was a part of that issue. Go down. Imagine stories that came out from that. Stuff needs to be only way to stop is uh one would uh said we need stick you see thing anything remote racist and professional now here's my thing st- 
storyline wise, oh no, no, no. I never had a problem with it. And Booker T never had a problem with that. You know why? Only problem I did have is that Booker T didn't win a championship. But the, I never had a problem with the storyline wise because the good guys always found always won in the end. Always. Except for the Booker T Triple H story. And Booker T didn't win a championship at WrestleMania, which he should have. But storyline wise, never had a problem with it. I didn't I never had a problem with them juicing up the race car and the stories. Never had a problem with it. Never had a problem with them juicing up the foreigners. Hey, Iron Sheik was headed in 85, 84 when Hogan beat him, 83, 84. Who cares? He was beat. Dude, Iran is headed again today. Iron Sheik gimmick would be perfect for wrestling, but too many people get offended. And they get shut down. As soon as they get offended about one thing over there, it's okay. They shut it down. But we get offended over here. Oh, no, you you guys are just, you, you don't understand. That's just, come on, man. The one excuse that, that is getting me ticked off the most is that these people keep saying that these women are jealous. Oh, they're jealous of her because she's she's about to become women's champ, I mean, become world champion for uh, Impact Wrestling, first women's world champion. No. I don't think jealousy has anything to do with this. Let me tell you why. Well, first and foremost, nothing against Impact, but it's Impact. This isn't the WWE. This isn't AEW. Goddamn, this ain't even Ring of Honor. It's Impact. Nothing against Impact. But you're not making any headlines. People ain't talking about Impact. They're talking about the other companies that I named. No matter the cool stuff that Impact is doing right now, no one's talking about them. God damn, I don't even want to see the ratings because I'm afraid that I might cry. What are they jealous of? That spot? They're better off going to uh, Ring of Honor or AEW or WWE. They're going to one of those companies because at least they're going to be exposed. Okay, not so much Ring of Honor. We'll take away. But they're going to be exposed to a nationwide audience. That people were actually watching. Impact has, a, has access to the world. But how many people are actually watching? One, two, 100,000. If that, tops, maybe, if they're lucky. NXT and Impact, I mean, NXT and, and AEW, they're co- combined bringing in almost 2 million viewers a week. On a Wednesday night, WWE, you know what their numbers are. So why would they be jealous? Because they're speaking the truth? No, what you don't want to realize and understand is Tessa Blanchard brought this on herself with her damn tweet. You can't call out these women and then expect these women not to come back at you. Especially if you got a past. Now, it's one thing if you were a sweetheart, people had nothing but respect for you. But, man, they are not doing this because they're jealous. They're doing this because she needs to be called out. Y'all want to call out John Bradshaw Layfield? He's a bully. Y'all want to sit there and call out Corey Graves? Then call her out and keep doing it. She's a, the girl's not just a bully. She's a racist. Allegedly. People ask me, why did you defend Corey Graves? You know why I defended Corey Graves? Because I know Corey Graves personally. I know his brother personally. I know his father personally. I know he comes from a good family. People call him a bully. He's not a bully. He's a worker. Something we don't have left in this business. Besides a few here and there because he was taught how to work. But I'm not defending Tessa Blanchard. Why? Because people have come out and said she's a damn racist. The bullying stuff, I really don't care. There's been bullies in this business forever. Sometimes you need bullies. People consider The Undertaker a bully. But y'all love him. I would consider The Undertaker a bully. 
But y'all love him. So we can let the bully stuff go, but when you start, when, when you got people claiming she's a racist, no, bro, no, there's no defending that. Just shows me the mentality that we have in this country. Still. Still. I know I went long here, but I want to take a break. And when we come back, I promise you it'll just be a station identification. When we come back, we're going to talk about, wow, <laughs> speaking of women, what the hell is going on with the AEW women's division? <sighs> Kenny Omega. Got some explaining to do. You're listening to the Devereux Committee of Pro Wrestling here on Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. We'll be right back after this break. You're listening. Stefan Devereaux, Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling, Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. We're back. Man. By the way, again, good luck to my man Sammy Callahan. Anyway. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get off that subject. I know I went long on it, told you some, some uh, a little bit of my history and so forth. Uh, sometimes I got to do that. You know, I got to do that. Let you know where I'm coming from. I'm not coming from a place of hate. I'm just coming from a place of experience, bruh. Anyway. Speaking of women, oh my goodness, the AEW women's division is a complete disaster right now. It's a complete disaster. And there's only one person to blame for that, according to the Twitterite. Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega. Now, as you know, Kenny Omega is the head booker for the the AEW women's division. He said he went out there and scouted talent, brought them in, blah, blah, blah. He's focused on getting these guys over. It's nice. It's cute. Oh, so adorable. But bruh, now he's firing back at critics. Now he's firing back. Come on, Kenny. You got to take this one, bro. You got to take this L. You have to take this L because the way you're booking this division is completely trash. Now, let's take a look. Okay, I'm going to throw off a few names here. We got Brett Baker. We got Nala Rose. We got Emmy Sakura. We got Awesome Kong. And we got Riho as the champion. Notice that again. Britt Baker, Nala Rose, Emmy Sakura, Awesome Kong. And we got Britt Baker, I mean, excuse me, uh, Riho as the champion. Every time I hear the name Rico, I just want to say, Rico, I mean, I'm dead serious. This is ridiculous. Now, come on. I apologize. Ray Mysterio was champion. You know why Ray Mysterio was champion? Because people actually gave a damn about Ray Mysterio. They took time. It took a little bit of time. But then at the end of the day, they gave a damn about Rey Mysterio. Then he became a champion. And in WWE, Rey Mysterio was one of the most over guys before he became world champion. Riho, dude, she, it's, it's like she, she looked like she's five. That four-way match that they had, and I'm sitting there watching this match, and I'm watching it with my wife, and you know she hates watching wrestling sometimes. But she's watching it with me because she loves her husband. Thank you, sweetheart. She's watching this with me, and I said, baby, watch. The four-way match, watch. The little one's going to win. She looked at me, and yeah. What happened? She won. She won. That was disgusting. That was disgusting. Dude, come on. Kenny Omega. I mean, is the rumors true? Is that your girlfriend? And then, what's up with the, the backstories of these women wrestlers? There is none. Besides, maybe Britt Baker has a tiny little bit. We know she's... But there's no backstory to these women. 
You know, oh, oh, my fault, my fault. Let me be correct. There is a little bit. Two women have backstories. Actually, one. Brandy Rhodes. And she's not even in the ring. She's a manager. Not only is she a manager, she, she's the manager of a, of a horrible gimmick. And this is how you want to use Awesome Kong? Are you serious? Awesome Kong could be your biggest baby face, female baby face, possibly one of the biggest baby faces in your company, top two, top three. Let's be, let's be real. Come on. Awesome Kong is coming off of two seasons of appearing on Glow, a very popular show on Netflix based on the former gorgeous ladies of pro wrestling. Man, I used to love that show. But Awesome Kong's a star on this show. And you bring her in as, I mean, we see her, we see her, but she actually can, you know, uh, act. So instead of playing off of that, playing off of her, you know, being a baby face on a show, a very popular show on Netflix, now let's bring her and make her a heel. Let's just turn it back to Awesome Kong. Those days are over. Old school Awesome Kong is over. And you're still doing, you're doing it now. That makes no sense at all, Kenny Omega. It makes no sense at all. Just like this brand, I mean, I'm not good. The bunny chick. Girl, got some talent. Oh, let's just throw her in this gimmick. Put her, put her in the blade. This is pathetic. This is absolutely pathetic. You are driving your fans away. Look at the ratings during the, during the women's matches. You see what NXT is doing? They're kicking ass. Their ladies are in the ring kicking ass. We know who they are. We know what they're going to do. We know what they're about. And with AEW, we have Riho. Little old Riho. She's so cute and adorable. Look at her. She can do all these moves. Who is saying, not one wrestler is saying, I mean, wrestling fan is saying this. Not one wrestling fan is agreeing that she should be champion. They're not agreeing with you. They're looking at you like you're an idiot. When you got all this other talent and you're worried about putting this one over, she's beat every little. What's the point now? Your women's division just got, has been decimated within two months. You put her on top. Next thing you know, she's beating everybody. Now what's left? What's left? Who? Are, well, Awesome Kong. Well, she already beat Nyla Rose. So how about we, like we're supposed to believe that she can't? <sighs> Kenny Omega, look. And the rest of you guys, because I, you know what? Let's not stop there. We're not stopping there. This is AEW's problem. AEW's biggest issue is that these guys, seriously, their booking is like so schizophrenic that you, I mean, I, I stop, I mean, dude, I'm, I'm dead serious. I remember back in the day towards the end of WCW Nitro, I had to literally get drunk to watch Nitro. Get me a beer. 40, of course, you know. <laughs> Get me a beer. And I had to drink that beer as I'm watching Nitro. Because it was that bad. But I had to cover it for my radio show. It was that bad. There was some, some okay stuff, but it was really that bad. That's what's happening right here with AEW. Because it's becoming that bad. You don't, I mean, and then my thing is, they're so damn focused on AEW Dark, it seems, that they're keeping talent off of their main show, which is Dynamite, and putting them on AEW Dark because, you know, we need to get the YouTube ratings. Why don't you get YouTube ratings with clips? That's what normal shows do when they consider themselves competition to Vince McMahon. They put YouTube, they put clips on YouTube. You put, you want to put on a full show. 
So that could be, hey, this is our SmackDown. Man, get that out of here, bro. This booking is horrible. What are y'all? MJF is one of your breakout stars. Dude, he's on TV on Dynamite maybe once every two, three weeks now. I, I scratch my head when I don't see him on the show. I'm like, dude, one of your best talkers, and you don't even put him on TV. So that's the problem. Talkers bring money and people into seats. Talkers, great talkers. I just, I don't get it. You got one of the best talkers in the business, and you say, oh, we got to put him on TV. Let's put him on AEW, dog. To pop what? To get you some few some YouTube views? I got no beef with you if you want to put clips on there. But you're concentrating on a full show, another full show, and you should be concentrating on your main show. Too many cooks are in the goddamn kitchen. Too many. It's the same thing that's going on in the WWE. But you guys want to say you're the alternatives. I mean, every week we hear about some, someone having a backstage meeting. One of the higher ups having a backstage meeting with the guys because this is happening or that's happening. Man, do y'all not realize nothing's going to ever change for you guys until you get one single voice in that creative room? One. Instead of 13 people trying to book a damn show that, I mean... This is not rocket science. This is so easy. But you're making it so hard. You got top talent that you're not even putting over. But, hey, Rio's going to get over. She's on TV every week, too. Ain't nobody trying to watch this chick, man. Especially in a top spot. Ain't nobody trying to watch her. I don't know who y'all fooling. Because y'all ain't fooling the wrestling fans. Yeah, your ratings went up the past couple of shows. whoop de do. They still haven't hit a million. They still haven't hit two million. Which they never will do. You're not going to get the talent who wants to come, who's going to come and leave the WWE and go to... Why would they want to leave, leave the WWE and just go to an even more dysfunctional uh, situation? Why? It makes no sense. Stay in the WWE, take your five-year deal, stay home, and, and look, hope for the best. But at least you know you're secure. Your bills are paid. You got money in the bank. AEW, yeah, you maybe have some a little bit of security, but you don't know if that company's going to be there in a year or two. You don't know this. You don't know when TNT is going to say, look, man, we've had enough. Because guess what? I'm feeling like they may just say that with better end of this year. If things are going to continue to go as they are, it just makes no sense. None at all. Then Kenny Omega's in this Hangman Page storyline. Like, bro. And then the Hangman Page storyline is even, it's even more dumb. I am trying to take a deep breath here because I had so many high hopes for this company. When it was first announced, you go back to the shows, go back into the archives. You will see that I actually had so many high hopes for this show. And they have proved me wrong, man. Because I was out there saying they're going to do this. They're going to do some good things here, blah, 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 blah. And goodness gracious. Yeah, that was cool they got Chris Jericho. Yeah, it was cool that they got the Bullet Club, you know, and gave them their own company or whatever. You know, some uh, there was some decent ideas, some decent stuff. But they have no foundation. They wanted to come out and take shots at the WWE. They wanted to come out and sit there and put their new talent over and then have them lose the week later. 
I mean, Adam Page was just in a he was in a main event storyline with Chris Jericho when his when his show began. Or before the show, excuse me. Now he's well, maybe he's going to be, you know, in a feud with Kenny Omega. I mean, who knows? One of your top talents. John Moxley, I don't know. Really? That last episode was trash. His reveal, it was trash. It was trash. It was nothing like the celebration when, you know, we was popping a bubbly. What's up? Hey, Y2J, what up, my man? Yeah, I know he's not called Y2J anymore. But anyway. But it, this makes no sense to me. And it's making no sense to the other wrestling fans. And see, the thing is, when us, the, the smart ones start to figure out that this is BS, it's over. So you got the dumb ones out who are out there who think they're smart fans. They don't realize it yet. They're still drinking Kool-Aid because they hate the WWE so much that they're going to drink anything that they can find. So all the little BS stuff, you know, come on. Goodness gracious, Orange Cassidy. That's another one. Another breakout star that you barely use, and when you use them, you, you use them in a stupid way. I'm confused here. Jack Perry finally gets his first victory on TV, which was cool. But where are we going to go from here? After the whole build-up with Chris Jericho, now you got him back to six-man tag matches. You know, instead of having him knocking on Chris Jericho's door like, bro, I lasted 10 minutes. Give me my title shot. No, they're not doing that. And that's because these people have no clue on how to run a wrestling company. They may be great wrestlers, but they have no clue on how to run a wrestling company. Tony Khan, he's just a damn money mark, and we know that, so we're not going to bash him. Actually, we are going to bash him. Why? Because he's the one letting these guys do this. See, I think the problem is, it's not his money, it's his daddy's money. If it was his own money, I'm pretty sure things would be a little bit different. So he's not really taking no loss here. He's not going to take no loss. His daddy's going to take this loss. Just like Dixie Carter's daddy. Yo, we forget about that, huh? Oh, man. Oh, it's just bad, man. Just bad. It's just bad. It's just bad. Oh, but <laughs> we're going to get out of here. And I hope that you enjoyed the show today. Don't forget, go to UCWProWrestling.com. Dot com. Check out information on the January 31st show in Dawson, PA. Yours truly, Stefan Devereaux, will be there. Get your tickets right now because when we sell out, we sell out fast. Uh, I think we there's some some tickets available. I do, be, I'm pretty sure. Um, but go to ucwprowrestling.com to get more information on the show. And uh, man, I just hope you guys. <laughs> I just hope AEW get their stuff together. I really do. But, um, man, it's kind of scary. And uh, like I said earlier about the Tessa Blanchard situation, we just got to stomp out, you know what I'm saying, these idiots. We got to stomp these idiots out of this business. You know, not everything is going to be perfect. Cool. But if even if we can't stomp them out, we're going to stomp some respect into these people because they're going to start respecting us. And if they don't want to, oh, don't worry. We'll make sure we help them along the way. But anyway, I want to thank you for joining me. Stefan Devereaux, Angry Kids 24-7 Radio, Devereaux Committee of Pro Wrestling. We are out. You're listening to Angry Kids 24-7 Radio. Angry Kids 24-7 Radio.